Facts. Now, your primetime local news leader, Fox 22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, police have made two arrests in connection to an alleged stabbing and robbery in Belfast Monday morning. The victim reportedly told officers that he was robbed at knife point and then stabbed multiple times near a wooded trail and encampment west of Route 1 before the suspects fled on foot. Belfast Police Chief Robert Cormier says the department followed up on tips and leads and located the suspects in Bangor on Wednesday. Chief Cormier says Belfast detectives obtained a search warrant and recovered the victim's property, wallet, and the knife allegedly used in the attack. 20-year-old Justin Wilmot and 19-year-old Isabella Nui of Fitchburg, Massachusetts, were arrested and charged with robbery and aggravated assault with a knife. Chief Cormier says the incident serves as a reminder to stay safe on Maine's trails and avoid hiking alone hiking and, and you know you notice something that doesn't look right and it doesn't feel right the best thing to do is try to get to a place of safety and call us we'd rather come out and have it be nothing um, than have someone get hurt both suspects are being held in waldo county jail without bail and are due in court july 28th one man was killed and two others were injured when police say a man from Florida lost control of his truck and hit a tree. Auburn police say it happened Wednesday night at about 8.15 p.m. in the area of 405 Marrow Road in Auburn. They say a 2012 Ford pickup truck driven by 24-year-old Pablo Trevino of Boynton Beach, Florida, was traveling westbound on Marrow Road at a high rate of speed. They say when Trevino attempted to brake, he lost control of the vehicle, went off the road, and struck a tree. The front passenger, who was identified as 29-year-old Aaron Kirk of Porter, Texas, was ejected from the vehicle and died. A second passenger, identified as 17-year-old Riker Hicks of Mobile, Alabama, sustained minor injuries. Auburn police are reconstructing the crash. No charges have been filed yet, but the investigation remains ongoing. A discussion held by Penobscot County Cares featured Maine's Director of Opioid Response, Gordon Smith, who provided updated statistics on the overdoses and deaths in Maine this year. Smith says in the first half of 2023, fatal overdoses dropped 6 percent, decreasing from 215 to 201 as compared to this time last year. He went on to highlight proposals in the current legislative session, such as LD 1714, a bill that would provide funding for recovery centers. Stakeholders say it's important that the community comes together to address this ongoing crisis. We lost over 700 last year, and that surpassed only the record from the year before when we lost over 600 people. So we have to make sure we continue to be sensitive to the fact that this is not normal. We can't accept this. Smith also previewed Maine's fifth annual opioid response summit taking place July 20th. A bill to authorize harm reduction centers in Maine is now headed to the Senate for a vote after passing in the House. Recovery advocates applauded the Maine House of Representatives for the passage of LD 1364. The bill authorizes municipalities to approve the operation of a center in communities that want them and requires a public meeting prior to approval of the center. Those who support the bill say establishing harm reduction centers, also called overdose prevention centers, is a public health-centered approach to combating preventable overdose deaths. Representative Lori Osher of Orono is a co-sponsor of the bill. In a statement, she said, quote, There are currently more than 120 centers around the world, some of which have been in operation for decades. There has never been a fatal overdose ever at any of these centers, end quote. Under LD 1364, each center will operate under the supervision of a medical director trained in addiction medicine and a center director trained in harm reduction strategies. It also provides legal protections for municipalities, employees, and clients of the overdose prevention centers. Well, Maine lawmakers say the printed version of the Maine Constitution should include language about the state's obligations to Native American tribes. The Maine legislature voted in support of a proposal to restore language to the Constitution that requires Maine to honor the treaties it inherited when it became a state more than 200 years ago. The language still applies, but was removed from printed versions of the Constitution later in the 19th century. The proposal still needs a two-thirds majority 
in both chambers of the legislature and approval directly from voters in a statewide vote. The state Senate unanimously passed a bill that would create a new Maine Student Homelessness Prevention Fund. Every school in Maine has a homelessness education liaison who would be able to use the fund to support students facing housing insecurity or those at risk of facing homelessness. The pilot program would give up to $750 in support per student. In 2022 alone, more than 2,000 Maine students were reported by schools to be experiencing homelessness. It was the first time homeless students made up more than 1% of Maine's total student population. Oftentimes what we've heard is um, families go homelessness and, and they have had or in the neighborhood of about $1,300 is the difference between them staying where they are or becoming homeless. And so this program is a pilot program that would step in and provide some of that funding. The bill now faces more votes in the Senate and House. A cost of living adjustment signed into law today will help approximately 30,000 Maine veterans and their families. The bill was sponsored by Maine Senator Angus King, and it ensures the Department of Veterans Affairs disability compensation, surviving family member payments, and clothing allowances get the same annual cost of living adjustment as Social Security. In a statement, Senator King said, quote, as everyday costs for Maine veterans grow, we have a responsibility to make sure their benefits are keeping pace. This bipartisan benefit increase is a step to help ensure those who served aren't struggling with their basic household budgets, end quote. Well, if you're a Versant or Central Maine Power customer, chances are you'll be paying more for your electricity starting July 1st. Doug Banks explains. In just two short weeks, those who use electricity to keep their homes alive will be paying more. According to the Maine Public Utilities Commission, for those using Central Maine Power and Versant, both Bangor Hydro and Maine Public Division, customers will have an increased rate of around $10 respectively. One of the reasons for this increase is the rates towards distribution and delivery of the electricity to your house. The other reason is the net energy billing. The most recent decisions that we issued this week related to the stranded costs which are sort of the public policy programs. There are contracts for renewable energy, which actually provide revenue to ratepayers to lower their rates. And then there's the net energy billing program, which is the distributed solar program that is adding a significant new cost to the program this year. In 2019, Maine legislature passed Bill LD1711, a bill to expand Maine's solar panel and renewable energy infrastructure, which in turn be distributed to consumers. This is shown on the stranded cost portion of your bill. That is the amount you will be paying towards the net energy billing. That amount is also the incentive solar developers will receive from the bill passed in 2019. On the surface, it looks like the electric companies are receiving all the money you pay. But because of supplying electricity and a strong relationship with the public, CMP and Versant are now stuck in the middle between the solar developers and Maine legislature and you, the consumer. The answer to the question, how can I lower my bill, has never been a simple explanation. Converting to reusable energy is easier said than done. As you may have seen in the mail and on social media advertising, there are a variety of community solar companies um, who are soliciting members and looking for them to join onto their community solar project. Um, if you choose to do that, that is an option. We uh, just recommend to customers that they do their research and make sure they're entering into an agreement that they're comfortable with. The future of our electricity is approaching, and now, we're in a period of costs having to be made. From Bangor, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22. In other news tonight, the Hope House Health and Living Center in Bangor is expanding a program to help those living in the shelter transition to homes of their own. Hope House is run by Penobscot Community Health Care. A spokesperson for the system confirmed more than $2 million in pandemic relief funds will be used to add 10 transitional housing units and hire 10 new staff members. The units would be located near the clinic where tenants pay rent for a single person room while they attain employment and gain independence. The spokesperson also confirms the project will likely start in October and finish up in the late spring or early summer of 2024. Legislation is being considered to add further funding to a program that sets volunteer firefighters and EMS workers up with retirement funds. Devin Dagnalt has that story. 
The Length of Service Award Program, also known as LOSAP, has been offering registered volunteer firefighters and EMS personnel retirement funding for multiple years. But the biggest issue so far has been where the program gets its funding from. As set out, the legislation does allow for municipalities and fire and departments themselves to contribute. Um, but that has been a non-starter up till now. Um, and and the, really the expectation has been that the state will kind of jumpstart that actual funding. The program receives no state funding and relies on the fire department themselves and the areas they serve for capital. LOSAP Chair Bill Gillespie says with an annual maintenance cost of $500,000 for the program, more funding is needed. LD 588, an act to promote public safety and retain essential first responders by funding the main length of service award program, is aiming to change that. At least a little. If passed, LD 588 would give a one-time payment of $2.5 million to LOSAP in order to give more volunteer firefighters and EMS workers retirement funding. It's really meant to retain our volunteers that are currently giving as much as they can, and also through word of mouth. We would hope that would get out that you can actually earn a retirement program just by volunteering on your local fire and EMS department and get more people involved that way. Gillespie says it is likely that 588 will pass, but he would like to still see further changes made in the future. We would love to have the governor put it in the budget to have the $2.5 million in there annually so we didn't have to come back every year and fight for the money. Uh, but at this point in time, we've not had any success with a continuous funding portion. In Augusta, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And taking a look outdoors, today was kind of a surprise sunny day when most of us were expecting raining conditions. There was some of that, of course, yeah. but still a little bit of a surprise on the back end. Yeah, drizzly conditions early in the day, and then Mother Nature flipped the switch, mm -hmm. literally turning the lights on for us and yeah. uh, get, providing us with that sunshine. Definitely curious to know what else is coming our way tonight. With answers to that question, let's get a first check of our forecast. Thank you, Beth. Today's first weather is brought to you by Saliba's Rug Cleaners, Maine's largest rug cleaning destination for over 70 years. All right, let's take a look at how low the temperatures are going to get tonight. It's going to be pretty mild for most of our area. Bangor will be sitting around 55 degrees, and it'll be a little bit chillier up north near Clayton Lake at around 51. And we'll have some uh, temperatures hanging around the upper 50s to our southwest. You can see near uh, South Paris at around 58 degrees. Now, we have not been able to get away from all this rain. We keep on having low pressure system after low pressure system, bringing in more scattered showers and thunderstorms. So let's take a look at this one that's on top of us right now. We see some more scattered showers moving on a south easterly trend right towards Bangor and they're going to bring some you know light to moderate rainfall with these because we do see some red in the radar as well which means that there'll be some heavier amounts coming but for the overnight planner tonight we're going to see a lot of cloud cover and temperatures will stick around the upper 50s before we get into the morning hours uh, tomorrow. Beth? Alrighty, Chase, thanks so much. We'll be waiting for more detail there. Yes, we will. And in the meantime, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, the University of Maine is awarded $650,000 from the federal government for an important study. And students at UMaine have put together a mutual aid-focused nonprofit. Our Callie Warren explains those stories and more local news coming right up. Sure, the driveway looks good now with the snow on it, but you know what will still be under there in the spring? The same cracks, crumbles, and potholes that were there before winter. Call Eaton Paving today. Let's make an appointment to fix those problems when the weather is ready. Eaton Paving and Excavation. Jerry's Used Cars has been a family-owned business for more than 30 years, currently in Corinna and Vizi. However, we have changed a little as we are no longer just a buy-here, pay-here dealership. We now have access to outside financing and also carry utility trailers. We would be happy to assist you with your next vehicle purchase. And don't forget, here at Jerry's Used Cars, we offer an extended warranty. So give us a call at either our Corinna or VZ location. Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash Loring. Job Corps careers begin here. Here at the Eddington store, we have what you're craving. From Holton Dairy Farm products to our daily breakfast, lunch, and dinner specials. Did I mention we have fresh cut meat? 
From hamburg to steaks and even fresh produce, we have what you're craving. And while you're here, don't forget your ice cream at the Dairy Bar and Homemade Whoopie Pies. Are you low on fuel? We offer gas, diesel, and propane too. The Eddington Store, for more than your average convenience store. We look forward to seeing you. Roman Reigns returns to SmackDown, and the future of the bloodline hangs in the balance. Is Jey Uso in, or is Paul Heyman out? An all-new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Sure, the driveway looks good now with the snow on it, but you know what will still be under there in the spring? The same cracks, crumbles, and potholes that were there before winter. Call Eaton Paving today. Let's make an appointment to fix those problems when the weather is ready. Eaton Paving and Excavation. Hello, I'm Emma Smith, and coming up on Good Morning Maine, we'll hear about a retirement fund that's been started for volunteer firefighters to try and encourage more volunteer sign-ons. Plus, we'll have a live and in-studio interview with some folks from the Penobscot Theatre. Plus, that full radar weather forecast with all the details of the rainy weekend ahead. Welcome back. University of Maine researchers are learning more about our official state berry thanks to recent funding. Our David Ledford has the story. Wild blueberries are such an incredible part of Maine's heritage, its culture. The U.S. Department of Agriculture National Institute of Food and Agriculture awarded $650,000 to a University of Maine project to investigate the impact of climate change on wild blueberries. This comes after recent data from the USDA showed last year's harvest of blueberries fell to 77.5 million pounds, a 25% decrease. Researchers say the dip is due to the impact of erratic weather. Last year we saw the effect of drought where uh, a lot of berries were very, very small because they just didn't get the rainfall they needed. Members of the Wild Blueberry Commission of Maine say blueberry yields for each year can be unpredictable and that funding blueberry research is essential because of the impact the fruit has on the state's economy. It's, you know, a major economic engine in the state. So we estimate that through indirect and direct impacts, uh, we generate about $250 million for the state's economy every year. Researchers say wild blueberries aren't just an important crop for the state. They also support ecosystems by providing pollination, food for wildlife, and more. Blueberry plants are a great resource of uh, nutrients for uh, bees and native pollinators and they are a really abundant source of food, uh, nectar and pollen. Based on their findings, researchers plan to share recommendations with members of the wild blueberry industry to help with production. In the long term, what we're hoping to do is to see what kind of conditions and what stages the sort of situation the plants will be in under different types of climate change. To learn more about the work being done by UMaine researchers, view this story on our website at foxbangor.com. In Old Town, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. It's no secret that money is tight for most college students, but when one UMaine student's research highlighted a concerning level of financial insecurity on the Orono campus, she set out to make a lasting difference. Callie Warren has the story. Tamara Benson is the founder of the Black Bear Mutual Aid Fund, a state-recognized nonprofit that takes in community donations to be distributed to those in need. The, that's where the Black Bear Mutual Aid Fund comes in. It's a community-led initiative to alleviate economic hardships and build a culture of community care at the University of Maine. She explains that the fund is intended to be a supplement to existing aid programs at UMaine, and it can be accessed by more than just students. It's a pool of resources that people can contribute to when they have extra and um, take from when they need it. Benson, a spring 2023 graduate of UMaine, started this project as her honors thesis. When she realized the need for another service organization on campus, she founded a group of students and staff to make it a reality. Benson asked her friends and family for donations to the fund in lieu of graduation gifts. The organization, while not officially affiliated with UMaine, helps people in the surrounding economy afford food, housing, medical care, and other basic needs. Benson says she knows that reaching out for help can be intimidating. Her message for those afraid to ask is simple. You are not a burden for asking for help. Everybody deserves the help that they need. For more information on how you can donate your time and resources to the Black Bear Mutual Aid Fund, visit blackbearmutualaid.org. In Orono, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. 
Meanwhile, a new study shows Maine is the third best state for minority entrepreneurs to succeed, and about 3.5% of all Maine businesses are minority-owned. According to federal data, the number of jobs at those businesses grew nearly 13,000% from 2019 to 2021. Our Brad Rogers has more. Andre Zamana and wife Jocelyn Kamikaze opened Burundi Star Coffee in Portland right before the pandemic. He had to take a job as a truck driver while his wife ran the business. Absolutely. Two meat pies and two samosas. Now his truck driving days are over. They have seven employees and just opened a second location at Unum. Thank God it's happening. You know, it's flourishing now, but it took time. Thank you. Min Nguyen started a food truck serving Vietnamese favorites about that same time. He's at East End Beach most days. We're doing good down here. Everybody like our food. We make everything from scratch, so everything is very good and fresh. Then there's Renee Pena, who opened La Bodega Latina, a Latin American grocery store 11 years ago. So how's business been? <laughs> it's booming. <laughs> it's been very well. After COVID, it has, it has taken off. Diversity seems one of the keys to success. On this very block, there's an African, Asian, and Middle Eastern business. And here in Portland especially, locals and tourists are very supportive of these minority-owned businesses. You know, we have a lot of uh, regular customers that they come in and, uh, you know, people supporting us. Maine is very welcoming, as you know. It's a, you know, they call it vacation land. It's because of welcoming, you know, nature. So, and now I'm part of it. I feel like I'm, I'm a Mainer. If you look at the influence and the impact, the number of jobs created in small businesses and in minority-owned small businesses particularly, we're seeing a lot of growth there in the last couple of years. Pena runs a wholesale business on top of his retail store on Congress Street. We even had to get a storage so we can't keep up. He's considering opening a second store for Latin Americans wanting a taste of home. Uh, it's here where they feel at home. Burundi Star Coffee buys its coffee from farmers they know in their homeland. But we are offering jobs right there. We are growing our own coffee, so we're creating jobs over there. The American dream of owning your own business, a risk these owners say is worth taking. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming. Just great to see these businesses not just staying afloat, but flourishing and, and yeah. booming. And it's really, I mean, it, it's definitely a benefit. You get to experience aspects of other cultures, yes. foods, their coffees. And there's obviously a domino effect, as we heard. Not only is it helpful for the main economy and people flourishing here, but you're even creating jobs in other countries because right. of what you're doing here in Maine. Yeah. That's just, that's just a win-win. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, the race for the White House continues to heat up as another Florida Republican enters the ring. And Russia and Ukraine are trading intense new aerial clashes as the Ukrainian counteroffensive continues. Those stories and more at the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Bath fitter is a better way to remodel your tub. Precise measuring means the perfect fit. The bath fitter tub over tub process means no mess or stress. A custom made tub and seamless wall mean a watertight fit. Premium acrylic means it lasts a lifetime. And all this together means a great value. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. is the longest lasting brand and at the toyota summer value event you can get affordable 3.99 percent financing on most highlander models toyota let's go places roto rooter has served the greater bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing hydro jetting snaking descaling video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Great things are always cooking at the ground ground. New menu, new specials, with an amazing variety of choices for every taste. Good times, great service, and amazing food. Only at your locally owned ground ground. Odland Road, Bangor. Sunday. 
The UEFA Nations League is on Fox. And it's underway. Four teams remain as they fight for glory. Netherlands. The Dutch breakthrough at last. Croatia. Croatia do it again. Spain. Spain are on fire. Italy. Shot taken. Goal. Who will rise up and take the crown? Incredible. And the floor underneath our feet is shaking. The UEFA Nations League final, Sunday at 2.30 Eastern on Fox. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood built to last. Made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Another Republican contender officially enters the race for the White House as rumors swirl about challengers for President Biden. Fox's Mark Meredith has more. It's time to take things into our own hands. He's 45 years old, the son of Cuban immigrants and the mayor of Miami. Now Francis Suarez says he's ready for a new job. I'm running for president because I think I have a different message uh, than what other candidates have. I'm, I'm generational. Suarez, serving his second term as mayor, is the third candidate from Florida to seek the Republican nomination. The DNC welcoming him to the race, writing Suarez, quote, is yet another contender in the race for the MAGA base who has supported key pieces of Donald Trump's agenda. Well, good to meet you too. But Suarez did not support Trump either in 2016 or 2020. He's even clashed with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over COVID policies and personal style. He seems to struggle with relationships generally. I mean, I look people in the eye when I shake their hands. Today, DeSantis DeSantis kept his eyes focused on California Governor Gavin Newsom, encouraging him to challenge President Biden for the Democratic nomination. What I would tell him is, you know what? Stop pussyfooting around. Are you going to throw your hat in the ring and challenge uh, Joe? Are you going to get in and do it, or are you just going to sit on the sidelines and chirp? Newsom tells Fox he's not entertaining a run. Under no circumstances would you consider running for, pre running for the Democratic nomination? No. None. None. And while President Biden remains confident in his primary chances, there are reports he may not be on the ballot in early states like Iowa and New Hampshire, where party leaders are still furious over efforts to move South Carolina ahead of them. Republicans remain focused on South Carolina, too. Today, former President Trump announced he'll be in the Palmetto State next month. It'll be his first campaign rally after his federal arrest and arraignment earlier this week. In Washington, Mark Meredith, Fox News. Meanwhile, President Biden will tout historic gun control legislation passed by Congress tomorrow at a gun safety summit in Connecticut. Fox's Caroline Shively reports. Gun violence in Denver. Two people were shot there Thursday after a parade celebrating the Nuggets NBA championship. Just two days after a mass shooting in the city injured at least 10. Individuals uh, armed with weapons um, acting irresponsibly in, in our community. Irresponsible, but not unusual. More than 16,000 people have been injured by gunfire in the U.S. so far in 2023, according to the Gun Violence Archives. More than 19,000 have died from gun violence in the same time period. Those numbers are a drop from 2022. There's some interesting data over the first five months of this year suggesting that murder rates, gun violence rates may be coming down by double digits in some of America's biggest cities. President Biden is scheduled to speak at a firearms safety conference in Connecticut on Friday, ahead of the one year anniversary of gun reform legislation passed after the Uvalde, Texas school massacre. The law expands background checks on buyers under 21, adds incentives for states to pass red flag laws, and makes it easier to prosecute gun runners. We have already charged more than 100 defendants under the act's gun trafficking provisions and seized hundreds of firearms in connection with those cases. Second Amendment advocates are pushing back. We don't believe there should be any restrictions on the right to keep and bear arms. President Biden now wants Congress to pass universal background checks and a ban on assault weapons. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. In other news, six people stand accused of trafficking human body parts, which were donated to Harvard Medical School for research. Fox's Nate Foy has details. Federal prosecutors say a network of people spanning multiple states bought and sold human body parts that were donated to Harvard Medical School for research. Harvard's former morgue manager, Cedric Lodge, is accused of stealing human remains and driving them to his home in New Hampshire, 
where his wife Denise would sell them, according to prosecutors. Katrina McLean of Massachusetts is one of the accused buyers. Her business, Cat's Creepy Creations, sells creepy dolls and bone art, at one point advertising real human vertebrae on Instagram. Prosecutors say she purchased two dissected faces for $600 and visited Harvard Medical School to select body parts she wanted. Court documents say that she went to the morgue to kind of look at some of these. Yeah, no comment on that. She's never been in trouble before, and obviously this is very distressful. She just wants to be home with her family. Prosecutors say McLean shipped human skin to this man, Jeremy Polly of Pennsylvania, to turn the skin into leather. According to the indictment, the group used PayPal for transactions with labels like head number seven, and brains, often shipping body parts through the U.S. Postal Service in violation of federal law. In a statement, Harvard University deans wrote, quote, We are appalled to learn that something so disturbing could happen on our campus. The reported incidents are a betrayal of Harvard Medical School, and most importantly, each of the individuals who altruistically chose to will their bodies to advance medical education and research. The U.S. Attorney's Office is still working to identify victims and contact as many impacted families as possible. The maximum penalty under federal law for each defendant is 15 years in prison. Reporting in New York, Nate Foy, Fox News. Certainly a disturbing story there. Well, Russia and Ukraine are continuing their intense aerial clashes as the Ukrainian counteroffensive continues. This comes as Russia mobilizes nuclear weapons to Belarus. Fox's Greg Palcott has the latest from Kyiv. Russia slamming Ukraine again. Airstrikes hitting the already battered southern city of Kherson. A wave of shelling and missiles launched against the country. The Russian aerospace forces launched a strike with high-precision, long-range, air-launched weapons. All assigned objects have been hit. This is Ukraine's counteroffensive is into its second week. Keep making steady but slow progress against a dug-in Russian foe. Today, another 500 yards. Officials remain determined. We are now getting stronger. The initiative is ours, and we are increasing our efforts. Key to the hope for success in any bigger Ukrainian military move, Western hardware, American Bradley fighting vehicles, German tanks, and more. Why some 50 allies of Ukraine met at NATO headquarters in Brussels to reaffirm support and plan new funding, with the United States leading the way. And Ukraine's fight is a marathon and not a sprint. So we will continue to provide Ukraine with the urgent capabilities that it needs to meet this moment. Still, Russia is adept at picking off some of that Western gear, often with destructive drones. They are a major weapon for both sides. A reason why Kyiv is launching a new campaign to acquire fresh drones, homemade and imported, for reconnaissance and destruction, and operators to run them. Beating the enemy on all fronts, key to officials here. Drone is the foundation of technological war. And technological war. Yes, yeah, technological. And I think we will win with drones. And that's critical. It's critical. In the end for Ukraine, anything to get this war out of the trenches and bunkers where so many of their best and brightest are dying is key. In Kyiv, Greg Palcott, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, air quality is becoming a major concern nationwide as wildfires become more and more prevalent. And in sports, the Coma softball is gearing up for their first ever trip to the state title game. We'll be right back. And the Yankees take on Devers and the rival Red Sox. Baseball Night in America, Saturday on Fox. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose, with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. So you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power. Control your life. Visit Generac.com. When you've experienced fire and smoke damage in your home, when pipes break and you have water everywhere, when you're concerned about your family's health because of mold, you need a friendly face to take care of it all. You need the friendly faces of Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. We're just a click or call away. Whatever life throws at you, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is here for you. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories. We'll handle the rest. 
Your roof is your first line of defense against the elements. Ensure it's always at peak performance with Peak Performance Roofing. With more than 20 years of experience in the roofing industry, our professionals provide quality craftsmanship and expertise that you can rely on. We are fully insured and stand behind our work. You can trust us to get the job done right the first time. Don't wait until it's too late. Contact Peak Performance Roofing today to schedule your free estimate. 416-8301. Peak Performance Roofing. Your roof is our priority. Silver Fox Automotive is a family-owned and operated company with more than 30 years of experience. We are originally from the county and offer competitive prices and promise you will be completely satisfied with our work. We offer a stress-free experience to both our new and returning customers. We only use parts from reputable brands to ensure your vehicle is safe to drive. Here at Silver Fox, there will always be a friendly face to greet you. Come see us at 2004 Odlin Road in Herman. On the Road, broadcasting the news at 6, live from Bar Harbor, is sponsored by Deba's 89 Main Street Bar Harbor, t-shirts, apparel, souvenirs, footwear, jewelry, and fun stuff. The Loft Raw Bar and Seafood Grill offers a contemporary craft seafood experience, including a hyper-local daily oyster selection. Ben and Bill's Chocolate Emporium, known for our delicious high-quality chocolates made with original recipes and more than 64 flavors of ice cream. Wildfires out west and in Canada are hitting almost the whole country with thick smoke full of pollutants. Now health experts are urging people to crank up the AC. Fox's William Lajeunesse has more on this edition or in this edition of Fox on Tech. As wildfire season heats up, air quality is a major concern. East Coast and Upper Midwest were inundated with smoke from Canada's wildfires last week. And now more folks are turning to filtration systems to keep the air in their homes clean while cranking up the AC to keep the smoke out. Experts say it's all about keeping the air moving. So if you have a system, whether it's a, a window air conditioner or a central system, keeping that fan on is important so that you're constantly cycling that air. Cycling the airflow is the best way to capture all those contaminants and particulates, and you'll need the right equipment. The CDC recommends an AC filter with the minimum efficiency reporting value, or MERV, of 13 or higher. Experts urge folks to check out their own systems, and if your filter is below 13, consider swapping it out. MERV 13 really means it'll start to capture particulates the size of smoke particles. So MERV 13 happens to be a pretty uh, magic number. Most existing AC systems can handle the MERV 13 filter and many are available online. The filters are about 85% more effective at capturing small particles that standard filters cannot. We look at the efficiency or the energy consumption on one side, but then also how well does it do other things like dehumidify, and it's not just temperature, but it's things like humidity, but also filtration. If you're in an area experiencing wildfire smoke, health officials recommend sealing your doors and windows, and of course, wear a mask if you go outside. In Los Angeles, William Lajeunesse, Fox News. Meanwhile, severe storms have people in the south on high alert, and the weather is not letting up anytime soon. Fox's Nicole Valdez is in Eufaula, Alabama, with the story. It sounded like a freight train, as people always said. It was kind of, kind of uh, hectic out here. So a lot of wind. Michael Dunnigan is one of millions of people taking in the damage as severe storms tear through the south. Powerful winds have toppled trees and left debris throughout Hogansville, Georgia. Here in Eufaula, Alabama, crews are working to clear roads and restore power lines after one tornado ripped through the town. The town's mayor says destruction has spanned four miles, but there were no major injuries or deaths. Local officials continue to urge people to stay inside as the severe weather threat is not over yet, with millions of Americans bracing for more in the coming days. Concerned about tornadoes, extremely large hail uh, and damaging winds, in some cases over 80 miles per hour, uh, perhaps even closer to uh, 90 or 100. And in Texas, triple-digit temperatures scorching the Lone Star State. Experts say the power grid should be able to handle the strain of keeping the AC running so long as there's enough solar and wind production.
but Texans urge to find ways to stay safe in this potentially deadly heat. Well, just drinking plenty of water and taking breaks in some AC controlled temperature room places, just, you know, taking a break every now and then. And then, of course, waiting in the water helps. Now, the severe weather threat is likely to continue through the weekend, but forecasters say it should calm down across the southern plains. In Eufaula, Alabama, I'm Nicole Valdez, Fox Weather. Mm. We've definitely seen our fair share of storms here in our area, especially over yeah. the last week or so, and sounds like that could continue. It's just always scary to hear triple digit temperatures that can yeah. be so dangerous if you don't have the resources to protect yourself, right. your pets, elderly loved ones. So, you know, you hope that folks have what they need, but it's a dangerous situation. It absolutely is. Alrighty, well, Chase Ropanak is coming up with our full five day. Stay with us. The rain has not been able to stop recently in our area. We've just been getting poured on week after week. When will we finally start to see some clearing? I'll have that coming right up. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Tucson with America's best warranty. Lease a Tucson for $249 a month or get 0% APR for 36 months or $750 bonus cash. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. Fear, pain, and anxiety are all feelings associated with dental treatments. But it doesn't have to be that way. Dental lasers offer a way to remove tooth decay without using the dental drill. In fact, we do most dental fillings here at Twin City Dental without numbing so no needle. And for treatments like root canals or having many teeth extracted, we also provide IV sedation. So call Twin City Dental for your next dentist appointment. Here at Twin City Tire and Service, you will be working with industry professionals. We have ASE certified master technicians and certified tire and loop technicians. If we need your vehicle for a duration of time, we offer a complimentary shuttle service and can even offer a loaner vehicle. Being a client at Twin City Tire and Service means that we will treat you right. This includes a three year, 36,000 mile warranty on mechanical repairs. We also provide you with one year of complimentary roadside assistance. Come see us today at Twin City Tire and Service in Brewer. Spend an evening with James Taylor and his all-star band. The American Icon is back on tour June 27th at Maine Savings Amphitheater. The multiple Grammy Award winning James Taylor and a night full of his biggest hits. Tickets on sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Spend the night with a friend, James Taylor. This is the USFL, Drivers USDA Prime Time Football. Welcome back, everybody. Today's Maine weather is brought to you by Maine Made Relief. Brown tail moth rash relief is extremely effective in battling the symptoms of the rash from the brown tail moth. Handmade with natural ingredients in Blue Hill, Maine. All right, let's take a look at that weather we're having right now. We seem to still have a low pressure system circulating over our area very, very slowly. And it's bringing some scattered showers on a southeastern trend through Bangor right now as we speak. But first, let's talk about the highs that we got up to today around Bangor. We're sitting around 73 degrees. And you can see down to the southwest, it's much warmer by Freiburg and Sanford. They're around 77 right now. And it's actually a little bit cooler up north near Clayton Lake, around 67 degrees. Going into tonight, though, the lows are going to be pretty mild. We'll see Bangor around 55. Be much colder up north around Clayton Lake around 51. And it looks like much of the area down south as well is going to be hanging around the upper 50s, mid to upper 50s. So it's going to be a pretty mild night out there for us tonight. Temperature trend shows that we're going to cool off big time going into Sunday. We'll be reaching a high of 58 degrees and then we'll slowly crawl back up into the upper 70s by Wednesday where we'll see a high of 77. So it should be some much more beautiful weather then. But we'll look at the muggy meter right now. Looks like by Friday night is when that's going to reach to around humid. That's going to be very sticky that day. Um, and then it's going to drop down a little bit. Looks like by Saturday evening as well. It's going to be uh, very close to the muggy region. So Friday and Saturday 
Saturday are going to be the days where the humidity is going to be way up there, may feel a little sticky, but then after that, it's all going to pass and it will dry off and we'll be in the much more comfortable region throughout the rest of the week. So for the future forecast, it does show some scattered showers in the area, and then we're going to see some isolated thunderstorm chances as we see much of more of the red passing through our area, and then shortly after that, it will be widespread showers that will move through western into central Maine starting uh, Saturday morning. And then for the wind speeds out there right now, it's pretty calm. It's a little breezy. We can see a, a southeast wind uh, around Bangor, around 5 miles per hour. And it looks like much of the area is just like that as well. So it's a pretty calm and a little breezy night out there for us tonight. For tonight's forecast, though, we're going to look at a low of 56 degrees. Pretty mild out there. We'll have showers early in the evening. And then we'll have areas of dense fog falling after that around midnight tonight. And then going into tomorrow, the high is going to reach around 76 degrees. It'll be mostly cloudy. And then those thunderstorms may move in in the afternoon hours, followed by some widespread showers. And then for your extended forecast, we're going to see we'll have the isolated thunderstorm chance tomorrow, followed by much more rain Saturday and Sunday. And then we'll finally start to clear up going into Monday, Tuesday with temperatures near the upper 60s. Beth? At least you could say it's sort of diminishing dry conditions and maybe bringing that fire danger down a little bit. Never a bad thing. Right. Yeah, there are definitely benefits to all this rain we've been getting. But sure. nice to see some sunshine at the end of the tunnel. Coming sooner or later. Yep. All right. All right. Well, sports is coming up next with Tyler Cruz. Stay with us for that. Jerry's Used Cars has been a family-owned business for more than 30 years, currently in Corinna and Vizi. However, we have changed a little as we are no longer just a buy-here-pay-here dealership. We now have access to outside financing and also carry utility trailers. We would be happy to assist you with your next vehicle purchase. And don't forget, here at Jerry's Used Cars, we offer an extended warranty. So give us a call at either our Corinna or VZ location. Wood, composite, or PVC, with options that include the modern look of cable railing. Your perfect new deck begins when you bring your vision to Hammond Lumber Company. When you get Spectrum One, you get fast, reliable internet for $49.99. Then, surprise, you find out you're also getting free advanced Wi-Fi with Security Shield. Another surprise. You're also getting a free line of unlimited mobile with 5G. Surprise, it's me. With Spectrum One, you're going to be very surprised by all the free stuff you get. Or you would be if I hadn't already just told you. Still, when you get in there, could you act surprised? A little something for the people in the store. Spectrum One. Internet, advanced Wi-Fi, and unlimited mobile. All for just $49.99. Call, click, or visit a Spectrum store today. Welcome to Rebecca's. For over 30 years, we've been serving our local customers in downtown Bangor, and we invite you to explore our historic shop. Rebecca's carries many main-made products from local artisans. Perhaps you need a gift basket for your next celebration. We'll be glad to help. From blueberry ceramic dishes, gourmet foods featuring Stonewall Kitchen, fine wines to antique dishes and furniture. You're sure to find that perfect gift. We hope to see you soon at Rebecca's. Tonight's Sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We're going to start with some hockey news and some great news out of the University of Maine. What is deemed by some as the top incoming recruiting class just got better. The Black Bears announcing on Thursday the addition of Artem Duda, a defenseman out of Moscow, Russia. Duda was drafted 36th overall in the 2022 NHL draft by the Arizona Coyotes, marking the highest draft pick to join the Black Bears since Barrett Heiston back in 99. He was selected 20th. Duda has competed with several hockey leagues in Russia, most recently scoring five goals and eight assists and 14 outings with the KHL over there. He joins an already deep defensive group with a lot of returners and a Black Bears team poised to make a run in 2024. All right, now to some high school softball. The Nokomis Warriors are regional champs for the first time after beating Herman to win Class B North on Wednesday. And as Ryan Sudol found out, pressure is what's making the Warriors turn to diamonds. 
I feel incredible. Being out here with these girls has meant more than anything to me, and going out there and winning felt even better. It's been a long time coming. For the first time ever, Nokomis Warriors softball can call themselves regional champions. That was a monkey off our back. We uh, had been so close all the time, whether you're one game out or you're in it before, and to finally get to that point where we could say we finished one off, it was really nice. The Warriors defeated Herman 6-2 Wednesday in the regional final. They trailed early, but a two-run homer by Megan Watson gave them a lead they wouldn't relinquish. I haven't really been able to hit too well the last five games, so be able to break the game open and get things rolling for our team felt really good. When she did that and we took the lead back, it, it changed my demeanor and it made me more comfortable. Ah, yes, Mia Coots, the Warriors ace, up to her old tricks, allowing just three runs in three playoff games. And with the competition being upped, she's upping her game big time. We know going through the playoffs, every team is going to get better and better and better. And she just keeps to keep coming back more and more and more. I love pressure. I, I've always gone by the standpoint that pressure is a privilege. And having that privilege is something that not a lot of teams get to have. And it's the ultimate privilege for head coach J.D. McClellan, who after two decades finally got the one he wanted. I think he's excited and he's trying not to show it. But that's for good reason. i got to try to keep... The, the face on that we're relaxed and so the kids don't get uptight because of me. I try to stay relaxed, but it's really difficult. And it certainly won't be easy against South Champs York in Saturday's state final, but the Warriors know where they stand, near the top. We know we have to buckle down and play the hardest we've ever played. They are good. They are really good, but so are we. So it's going to be a good game, and we know that we got to work hard and stick to our basics. In Newport, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. Go Warriors, that's all I got to say. <laughs> Cut scene right there. <laughs> awesome way to end that. Wishing them luck. So the Warriors going for that first state title to join the trophy case next to that first regional title. Let's take a look at all of our state finals matchups scheduled for the weekend. In Class A, Edward Little and South Portland are going to battle in baseball, while Oxford Hills and Wyndham will go at it on the softball diamond, both of those games at the University of Southern Maine. In Class B, top-ranked Old Town from the north We'll look for their second title in three years. They're going up against the South's number two in Yarmouth, while Nokomis looks to finish off that perfect season against the South's top seed, York. Both those games are up here at Mansfield for baseball and Coffin Field for softball. Class C heads back down to USM. Bucksport baseball looking for two in a row. They will play at Monmouth Academy and Bucksport softball looking for another number on their banner as they take on the Halldale Bulldogs. And last but not least in Class D, Bangor Christian baseball looks to keep it going against St. Dom's and Machias playing in their first softball state title game as well against top-seeded North Yarmouth Academy. Those games are up here at Mansfield and and coffin as well. Let's move on now to some news out of Husson University, where longtime athletic director Frank Pergolizzi is calling it a career. Pergolizzi announcing his retirement from collegiate athletics on Wednesday after spending 10 years at the helm of the Eagles and over 40 years in total spent with institutions across the NCAA. During his tenure at Husson, Pergolizzi added the women's golf program, the women's tennis program, and both men's indoor and outdoor track and field. The Eagles have won a total of 56 conference championships during Frank's time in Bangor. And in a statement, he says, quote, the 10 years that I spent at Husson is a time that I will always remember. We had considerable success on the playing fields and in the classroom. He also says he will continue to support the Eagles as he moves forward to a new adventure and wishing him the best of luck in whatever that adventure may be. That's all the time we have for sports, though. Be right back after the break. Looking to buy or sell a home? The More True team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the More True team a call today or visit their Facebook page. Have you always dreamed of having a beautiful green lawn? Let Maine Lawn Pros help. Featuring hydro seeding, the fast, affordable, and effective way to achieve the lawn of your dreams. Hydro seeding is a process that involves spraying a mixture of grass seed, fertilizer, and mulch onto your lawn. The result? A beautiful green lawn in no time. Hydro seeding is perfect for both residential and commercial properties alike. So why wait? Call Maine Lawn Pros today to help you get the lawn you've always wanted with hydro seeding. 416-6122. It's summer and the savings are heating up at the Furniture Gallery. Sofas starting at $3.99, recliners starting at $2.99, queen mattresses also starting at $2.99. 
Ashley Flex Seal Nectar Restonic and Serta. If it's in stock, it's yours to take home today. So what are you waiting for? The Furniture Gallery Summer Savings Sale is huge. Special financing is available. Support our main family-owned business and save money. Your best value is always at the Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and North Windham. Approximately 50,000 kids, like Brooke, receive care at Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center each year. You can help them by supporting the Summer Classic for Maine Kids. This new tournament will help all kids receiving care at Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center by raising funds to ensure that pediatric care is available today, tomorrow, and in the years ahead. Every dollar raised helps kids get back to the business of being kids. For more information about the event and how to donate, please visit northernlight.org slash for kids. Looking to buy or sell a home? The More True team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the More True team a call today or visit their Facebook page. It's an out of this world celebrity competition. Oh, <laughs> God. Stars on Mars, Mondays at 8, 7 central on Fox. Welcome back. A barn in a new Gloucester Shaker village is being restored, and this week they're working on the foundation. The Sabbath Day Lake Shaker Village is nearly two centuries old. It's the only Shaker barn left in the U.S. that Shakers still use for its original purposes. To install the new foundation, they first needed to raise the building. The barn, first built in 1830, houses 50 tons of hay every year, in addition to tractors and equipment, so those involved say the project is crucial. I think this is something really historic and important. It's not something that just hits my heart because it's farming and it's in my community, but I think that we're seeing more and more the loss of great barns because who can afford them? The project will cost more than $1.3 million. One million of that has already been raised. All the work is weather dependent, but if all goes to plan, they'll lower the barn in a few months. And here's hoping, in fact, everything does go to plan. Well, finally tonight, an update to a story we brought you a few weeks ago. Belfast police officers working with students from Troy Middle School graduated from the first ever LEAD program. This 10-week program brings law enforcement into the classroom to teach K-12 through students evidence-based drug abuse prevention education. Police officers worked alongside teachers to help students develop critical thinking and good decision-making practices when it comes to drugs. The graduation included 116 students and, of course, an ice cream party to celebrate everything they've learned. Congratulations to all of the participants and definitely a great concept going on there. Yeah, I'd love to see that partnership and, you know, just hearing from those officers mm -hmm. uh, earlier in the program when it was going on, yeah. you could tell how dedicated they were to, to installing that knowledge at an early stage for those And students. how much they're hoping to shift the dynamic and yeah. change the tide in terms of substance abuse disorder by educating kids early on so that they never get on that track. Yep. Yeah. All righty, folks. Well, that is going to do it for us from everyone here at Fox 22 News. Take care and have a great rest of your night. Good night, everyone.